2005, our family moved from the conveniences of the city to the open spaces of the country. Our original plan was to build a large home. Welcome to our courtyard. Here's our earth bag bedrooms, my family, and how our plans changed. We had talked about so many different things that we were gonna do, like build a house. I, I wanted to put in a big house. And then we experimented with the ideas of uh, log and steel. But as we lived out here longer, we started to beat some of the neighbors. They were explaining, you know, living with alternative building materials and living mortgage free. It's this idea that we would have several small structures one being the main house, which isn't really too much of a main house. It's a one bedroom, one bath house. And then build a bedroom for each of the kids around in the backyard to make a sort of a courtyard. A house with outdoor halls. Yeah. We added lofts up into the house so that the kids would at least have a space to sleep in until their rooms were built. When we finally settled on doing these earth back houses, I admit like even halfway through it, I didn't think it was gonna actually get done. Like I was just like, no, this can't be happening. Until I moved in, it was just like, wow, it's happening. When we were doing the floor, it was uh, me, mom, and Shay, I think, going through and putting all the paper down. And Shay kept like laying the, like full squares of pink down. For some reason, she kept grabbing those out and they were just, <laughs> All over the place, man. It's cute that you Stuck think that was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting about a round room is that, you know, in your world, you step outside and you're not in a square. It's really nice to have like a break from that. It's more easy on the eyes to walk into something that's more naturally built than to walk into something that's very rigid and perfect. I wanted a deck on the top of the, the room for stargazing. And so we kind of went through this couple designs and then we figured out this crazy eight idea where it would be the same amount of square footage as all the other rooms, but it, it would also provide two kind of separate areas for stuff to be put in. We're breaking ground on Bryson's earth bag building. The first thing we need to decide is where we're going to put it. You were to see it to, from the house, in keeping with the way this is kind of swinging around. Are you going to have to around. take the laundry down? Well, maybe not. We move it over this way. We could just put it in Bryson's room and he could just automatically be the laundry guy. I like it. Now I'm just going to lock my door. This clothesline is set low so we could help when we were small. Sometimes it's hard to have kids help when they're little because it's just quicker to do it yourself. But it's really important to let them help because it allows them to feel like a valuable part of the family. But I guess we could raise it now that you guys are taller. But I kind of got used to it being short. What do you the laundry lines are moved out of the way. The guys set a center stake and mark out a circle. Finger right there. Tip it down. And hold it straight up and down and walk it. All right, that's the inside. Bryson's room will be made up of two small circles, like a crazy eight. Let's be able to put our trough in. We need a trench. We need a trench. All right. Okay, Shay, we got our chart here, but the poles are 41 inches apart. All right. We'll be using railroad ties for the doorways. And then walk through here, and then, and then we have a little walkway through here. But this will have steps down, and then we have this room here. The trench is cut in and leveled. So what we're doing here, is we picked a spot which is our main level so we can see from right here if we pull this up to the right level We've got about two inches to go and this string will work its way all the way around the entire loop and we're taking these in about five foot increments so that when we lay down the bags they'll all be level once the posts are secure and the leveling done a threshold is constructed one circle will be lower, so Dad sets up for the steps. To out here to 45, to here to a 45, till we get a step. And then I'll build another step in. Five and a half That's inch risers and a nine and a half inch tread. Goopy stuff? Yeah. I'm putting cement in. I'm balancing this. For cement. There's absolutely yeah. no use to what I'm doing. First time we've ever put steps in. Two. 
roll this along. Grab your bags off. Okay, pull them inside out. We put down them. the first earth bag layer. Hang on, I'm retrieving my flip flop. And then every time they ask me to get into a car, I'd be like, why? <laughs> All right, so you got any champer? 45 buckaroonies. Wow, it works good. Really good, actually. Oh, oh, oh. We're inviting some people over to help with our earth bag building. It's time to prepare. First, easy access to damp dirt. Well, it's not like I forgot that Jeff was coming over, but he was there early and I wasn't ready. So I jumped out of bed because he just knocked on the door to get us some dirt for Bryson's building. We had um, laid out a circle for him to be able to pull the dirt from. What a time saver, you know, the difference between a huge bucket on a tractor and a, and a wheelbarrow on a shovel. Yeah, it'll all level out just fine. That dirt life is kind of, you did a great job. It's amazing what you can get with a few bucks and a case of beer. Yeah. Let's go then. Yeah, Appreciate thank you. you. You're awesome. I'll go back and uh, make sure my couch didn't move anywhere. Next, installing the electrical wire in boxes. Shay and Bryson and I had a goal that we would put in one layer of bags a day and get up, I don't know, it's like a couple feet up to the point where the guys are going to be putting in the electrical. There were several evenings that we decided we would just wait till the sun went down and we put up this big light and just went ahead and worked no. it. Are you guys out there? I can't see you. Uh, yes. Woo! It's our bag building just right down there. It's really scary. Fire's just right there on a hill not too far from here. We wanted to get the electrical in prior to the group of people coming over because we just didn't want to mess with that when everybody was over. Garen came in to help us. What universe have we ever been like everyone? So go ahead and put these uh, boxes in and strategic locations for the inside and one for the out. We have to separate the wiring with the barbed wire that we use to hold the bags. We're able to use these U-shaped nails to be able to separate the two wires. The purpose is so that we don't get an electrical short. If it shorts out, it is going to be a bummer. The electric will be hooked up to the nearby solar system. The final step before the group of people came over, which was getting one layer above the electrical. They broke up in two groups, Gary and Bryson, and Shay and Garen, and they, they raced to see who could finish the circle first. Ooh, nice boots. Yeah, yo. Oh, watch the nails. They had a huge doorway in their bag circle that they didn't have to bag in there. But you know, they always have to have the last word then because they don't want to lose any of their beefiness or whatever. Okay, doing okay? Are we doing okay? But we totally won. Yeah, we just like crushed you. We beat them like nobody's business. Oh, we definitely won. We creamed them. We need several cleats. We have three different types of cleats that we use. We have the simple cleat that fits inside of the two bags. Then we have another cleat that fits up against a window. Then we have a third kind that we use. They have kind of a, an L shape. We made over 40 cleats. I could make mine really fast, but Bryson, he put like a bazillion nails in there. And then, when you're done with putting nails on this side, you flip it over, so the nails stick up like this. Kind of doing the cleats, you could put like five nails in it, or like 20, and I was just putting mine in, and I had them beautifully nice in a row, everything symmetrical, perfect, and she was just 21 left. Wow. Two by 12 window frames are also needed. Found on Craigslist a couple of um, great brand new windows. A four by three and a two by two. Double Cost is 120 bucks for both windows. It's windows, you know? So we're gonna be using these for the steps and window frames. Two by 12s and two by 10s. Well, the size of a window is static, meaning it's usually a half an inch shorter so that it'll set inside of a window frame. In our case, we could just make the frames three foot by five foot, three foot by four foot, and so on. I used three two by sixes and just nailed them together as a big header. Why do these things have to be together? These are headers that go above the windows. Help support the weight of the roof. So that we're not putting the weight of the roof over the top of the window itself. Steps are next. Okay, these are the treads for our stairs. Two by uh, tens. So it'll be nine and a half inch treads. And here, come with me, I'll show you how it goes on. These 
will all go up. Each, each, every two rows, we're gonna have one step coming up and a circle going all the way up to there. Inside the walls, we of course ran nails up and rail, ran nails down, similar to how we do our cleats. And we chose to bring that out and just let it f kind of free hang and maybe just a small temporary post underneath of it. We also are gonna have bottles prepared. We're gonna put in a little bottle yeah, so. window as the steps go up. Lastly, a center pole is placed for measuring. We place a pole in the center of the building. It's an inch and a half pipe that runs completely up about nine, 10 feet. Now we have a nice pole that runs through the center of the building to be able to gauge the circular uh, bags as they go around. The lightning storms are bringing additional challenges. This is what happens when stuff is too wet. Water starts bubbling up the sides and it gets really sloshy. Like you can't bag on top of that, it's jello. That doesn't dry out, we're gonna be in trouble. My awesome room. Da, da, da. As you see, Dad, to buy it. We put in the arch. We're gonna put up that arch there. We put in one step to go up to the top of that. Our friends arrive to help build Bryson's building. However, immediately we experience a problem. A storm hits the night before, dropping two inches of rain. So Dad, what happened? We had a two inch rain and soaked our bag. Trying to move, maneuver them around a little bit and we end up half the wall collapses on one side. So we have to tear that all down. We have to go back to the foundation and we have to kind of start over. Restarting the foundation was a little discouraging. But the other one, the other circle's okay, Dad? Yeah, the other circle's okay. So we start bagging as fast as we can so that when people show up, there's something to do when they get there. I think the night before, we're just gonna, if there's a chance of rain, we're definitely gonna put tarps on. I have this ingenious plan to split everyone up in teams. However, there's no way to evenly divide the work because the layers have to go up in sync. But that's our little secret. Yeah. Green team mascot. Wow. Virgin. Lots of enthusiasm. Oh, yeah. Our friends Esther, Andrew, Deborah, and Peter came over to help us. It was so much fun to work with them. Than the speed of nature. <laughs> if well. there is a speed in nature, it's more faster. Do you know how slow nature is? <laughs> it's too slow. That's what it is. We are the strength of the ocean. That's right. My well, favorite thing about building with earth bags is that all ages can participate. Yeah. Hello, coming in at we don't know. And team We're blue. We're totally gonna win. <laughs> yeah. Are you feeling it? We're up. We're you're you're up. And, and then my my home team right here. The green. The yellow. Are you guys the yellow team? Yeah. What, what do we get, Mom? Oh, it's a sign. Hello, little bug. We need to reinstall the electric. Esther and I duct taped the wheelbarrow wheel and it surprisingly worked for quite some time. We used our arms to measure how long we wanted the bags, about three arms length, and we straightened out the barbed wire as much as we can. Our friend Jackie helped me out. We cut it in sections using bolt cutters and then it was laid between the bags. Barbed wire <laughs> springs into action and Jackie yeah, is in the line long. of fire. Careful, Some of my buddies from work showed up. We had Scott, yeah, Alex, their yeah, son, yeah. Malcolm was here. And then our hero Tom shows up with pizza. After lunch, we fixed the wall that had fallen and we're ready to go higher. Everything wasn't so bad with all that rain. Yeah, all that dirt now was a bit damp. Uh, that made packing the new stuff a lot easier. That's right. It was pretty exciting to see that first window frame coming in to be placed. What you doing, Mom? Little bottle lights for our steps. Hello, Tana. I tell you what, he really is a trooper. He came over and jumped up on that wall and just started working really hard. So, so far, thanks for been falling off yet? No vertigo. Is that rain? Over here you can see a storm is threatening, but over here it's blue sky. So you never know if we're gonna get hit or not. Some of us are desk job people. We're starting to slow down. We're over waist high in bags. Three window frames are installed, along with four steps. Having friends over to help build the earth bag walls is a real boost. We're halfway to the top. Let's take a look at the cost so far. $200 to excavate the dirt. $50 for the electric wire and boxes. Around $250 for window frames, cleats, and stairs. $35 for railroad ties and cement. 
We're continuing our one layer a day, and then as we get higher, we'll have to back that down to about a half a layer a day. We stayed pretty diligent on maintaining that distance from the center pole to the outside of the building. This is really going to help us when we get to the roof at the very top. Okay, so we're not nailing the cleats in, in the windows until we get a little bit high so that we can level the windows. That's a little different than we normally do. We normally nail those cleats in as we're going up. This time we're going to wait until after we're done with the roof. And the building has to settle too. On the bags, we cut out about, uh, say, a 15-foot length or so, and then we turn them inside out. And then we just have to be careful that as we lay them, we don't, the, the seams don't match up at the same places. Our new addition to our farm. After the kids get settled in their bedrooms, they get a pet. Karen's dog, Diesel, is he just gets so excited. He's a little black lab, and he's just so playful, gets into all the bags when we're trying to work and Woo! such. Rolling. Are you helping? Are you helping? <laughs> Poppy is pooped. Play with the bag. A minute later, out. Look how solid these things are. It's amazing. So we point them to the center pole, and we do every two bags. Two. It's just enough for like one person, you know? Like a normal step is longer than those. We cut it down inside so it wouldn't take up most of the room. We're using cleats inside the walls for hanging pictures. Really hard to know exactly where we're going to put those pictures, so we just kind of put them everywhere. I tuck the end like a paper airplane, you know, and then I'll step on that, curl it up, and I'll lay it on my leg. But as they load in dirt, I just let it down, and then at the end, I'll fold it and set it down. When we put two port jars together, and then we just kind of tape them down a little bit with duct tape so they don't move around until we can get the bags laid over the top. The jars will now create this natural lighting for each step. I wonder if we're going to run out of barbs. We ended up using around a roll and a half of barb wire. Wear jeans. It's advised. It's probably uh, $70 a roll. Second roll. Adding to our list, barb wire coming in at $105. We had to cover the bag building up from the rain because yeah. it was making it soggy. After our last problem with the rain, we tarp every time when we figure it's going to start raining. With the header, we level both sides so that we get a nice box around the frame. Are we going to lay a bag over the top of this? Yeah, several bags actually. This is another place now that we added candy jars so that some of the morning light can come through. And wave him in the air like you just do not care. As we get higher now, we start to need more help to move that dirt up to the top. So um, Bree got in there and helped us out. Oh no. My dog Max came out and helped us out while we were working. And he came, you know, he went up on the top of the earth bags with us. If you look down, when you're acrobats, get you into places you don't want to be. Oh, he passed the steps again. Oh, no, I'm really scared. But I ended up having to go out and save him because he couldn't get back down. It wasn't like there was like stairs or anything. Adding in approximately $210 for earth bags brings the total cost of the building so far to $850. Hold on to your hats, because it's about to get one. Because we have a circle, I wanted to put um, a design on top of it on the roof that's somewhat circular. So we, uh, we laid out our joists on two foot centers like you would a normal patio roof. We have um, 20 footers are for the longest sections during the circle. You know, I have a circle, so that's for the longest sections. Our jig that we're gonna use, the uh, joists, we'll run in this direction here for the rafters on the roof, for that flat roof. And then we can adjust them up and down and then cleat them in on both sides. And then when the bags lean up against them, that'll give it lateral strength this way. And then these get all pinned into the top of the bag. The lumber cost for the cleats is $100. We have uh, straight lines running north and south, and then we needed to have joists that go out perpendicular to the outside put on there with joist hangers to help support the weight. And then there were these little jacks that even went off on a 45 from that. The total cost of the rafter lumber is $250. So just when we think we're done bagging, we still have a little bit more bagging to do in between each of the rafters. The alternative of bagging to that would be cobbing, and that is not any fun to try to fill it with cob. Like 50 pound pant tamp. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. And this entire area out here is all going to be the top deck. Since it's a deck that we're going to be walking on, 
I wanted like a three quarter inch material or seven eighths material. I need to do two biceps. Gary can be just working away and he just seems to know when it's time to just slow down and teach the kids so something. See how just two things, a square corner and bisecting, you can split this up into as many segments as you want to that are all equal. The bill for the plywood is $250. Pull up the plywood a little bit so we can make our cuts. Put our fascia board on, reattach the plywood, and we have a segmented roof up here that's all almost looks circular. That's good. We can put like telescope stuff on there and even a bed maybe so we can sleep up there. Fascia is around a hundred dollars. As usual. <laughs> We're trying something new. I'm not used to a roofing material that isn't like asphalt or steel. We went to a kind of professional roofer and he suggested that we use the 30 pound felt and three coats of um, snow roof. Here's what we're doing. We're taking this microfiber and we're laying it over the creases and we're covering it with the white roof coat. We ended up doing like three or four coats on there. The expenses are low until we get to the roofing. That's when the cost starts to really add up. Adding in the roofing and paint supplies at $100 brings our total of the back roof to $800. Our running amount was $850. Our new expenses brings our total to $1650 so far. The roof on the front half of the building takes a creative shape. It's more conical, kind of a tilted cone to give enough room for the inside to have stairs. They run up to the long side and a door that goes out to the flat roof. This, these go up there for the door. The door requires two posts to be installed on top of the flat roof. This much, so this is really how high we gotta go all the way. Then we can run the bags along the sides right up to those posts. There are now tall bags on one side of the roof and shorter bags on the other because we're stair-stepping them up to allow for the cone-shaped roof. We used old tent poles and double barb to help strengthen the walls when they get really high. The platform's right at the top of the stairs so that we can open up a door up there and, and get out onto the main deck outside. And I'm just glued it right on there so we don't have any problems of squeaking. We use the same type of cleat system that we used on the other roof. We choose one of the door posts at the top of the other roof to be kind of a center post. Before we put the plywood on, we're going to have to bag up all around the outside edges so that it's flush with the plywood. Booyah! We're closing in the last little bit here in the very, very corner. It's right there, and it, they've bagged all the way across here. And it just it makes it really nice. It like, closes in this whole section. It's pretty cool. The last bag we probably will ever put up. Right there. Bryson and I go brain dead trying to get this fascia on the outside of this cone-shaped roof. There's a lot of compound angles. And I'm making calculation errors. I got two fascia boards up and we had to quit. Garen notices how frustrated I was. He feels sorry for me. So the next day, he's out there helping. He's helped us with the uh, angles and bevels up here and it's made a great difference this morning. If it wasn't for him, we'd all be doomed. <laughs> The sheeting up there is like a puzzle. It's so unique that we have to cut all these odd angles and we're doing angles that are, you know, when you have an angle this way and you have an angle that way. Anyway, we have all these weird angles we keep cutting and whew, those are hard to figure out. We bought the wood for the conical roof frame all in one shot. The cost, $600. Adding it to our accumulated cost for this project brings our total to $2,250. We we're putting up a six by six uh, porch. We got some posts. Instead of like going down to the forest and chopping them down, we bought them at the store. Oh. They're really straight. <laughs> <laughs> unlike Bree's, right? Bree has uh, yeah, these skinny Bree's. little things. It's real strong. It's all mesquite wood, but it's just a totally different look. The next thing we do is get all the trim around the edges, the um, metal rain drip trim, and then uh, finish paper. And then we're ready for the indoors. We went with the Andorra because it's not as difficult to cut. It's supposed to last really long. Right now it's been up to about a year on Garen's room. And it seems to look just the same as when we first put it on, actually. No fading. Yeah, no fading at all. 
So the product pretty, seems it. to be pretty solid. This, yeah. We're still not sure. But. That's an interesting way to hammer. That is painful <laughs> to watch. <gasps> bam, bam, bam. Done. While the guys work on the roof, me and mom decided to start with the stucco. To prepare for the gals going around the corner there with the stucco, we need to have the windows complete so that they can bring the stucco right up next to the trim. We built these particular frames so they're not attached to the bags or the header. I'm not gonna so do these windows loose anymore, I don't think. No, we're not doing them loose anymore. They have the windows framed, so we're gonna start stuccoing at least one of these circles. We've decided on stucco because it holds up better in the rain. Bryson was up tamping two rows up from the glass, and to our shock, we it cracked. I have found what we should put in there. Oh my goodness. That's way too big. We'll Isn't make it work. Perfect fit. Look at that. It's a perfect fit. How are we going to get that in there? My glasses for protection of her eyes. I got eye protection. You can't I got bri see. protection. <laughs> It feels like the stucco goes really, really slow. But we've been plugging away okay. every day. We do, you know, a couple batches. I keep getting dropped on. Part of educating our kids is to spend about an hour a day doing some sort of physical work. You know, it's really important is to uh, have the kids complete something. You know, there's nothing like finishing a project and having that sense of accomplishment. One of the benefits of the earth bag buildings is that when they get done, they get a bedroom. We started looking back at it and it looks like we've gone like super far. So obviously, now that we're in the lead, we're gonna make it a game and, you know, beat the boys. Yeah. The idea that the ladies can beat us here is, is a little unusual because we're really good and very fast yeah, and the really endorse goes up real quick. And we can hammer those nails like nobody's business. That's right, it's fast. Bam, done. However, just to make them feel better, we ran out of materials. Yeah. That we can really slow them down, Bryson, is not get the door done. Oh, because they can't come around the door, then we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Mom and Shay are racing to get the stucco up before Dad and Bryson can finish the door and roof. But before they can get out there, the weather takes a turn for the worse. Uh oh, Shay, this might put a damper on our victory dance. Meanwhile, Bryson and Dad are working inside. We got a really good deal on a wooden door. We only paid about 75 bucks for the door on the crates. For all? Hey. My friend Andrew came over and he helped out. I want to bring me two of these bolts so that they, they're black. And stick them in the holes, tighten them down, and then grind the tips off. The door had 48 bolts and nuts and washers. With a lot of washers. I had to build a frame for it. That looks like you cut it right. Well, amazing that. And then assemble the door to the frame, which means cutting in the joints hinges. for the hinges and I do some dado cuts and uh, chiseling. relieving, chiseling, yeah. And then set the door inside there. With the cost of the door at 75, plus the hardware at 25, and the door jam of 50 bucks, our total is 150. <laughs> We used cob for breeze room, but cob requires a roof protection and also some sort of way of protecting it, linseed oil or paint. We decided to use stucco, which doesn't wash away in the rain. My friend, Esther. Hi. It was so much fun to have her over no, here. No, no, I'll watch. <laughs> I just, I'm just gonna have to invite her every time. We used 10 or so bags of cement and a truckload of sand. That brings the stucco cost to 125. The gals are the clear winner because the ridge caps for the roof won't arrive till next week. We'd like to not admit that the ladies beat us because... Oh, they didn't beat us. Well, it's not even no, fair. We didn't have all our stuff. I know, we didn't have our materials. Our... Hey, but we won. <laughs> we did win. <laughs> the reason they lost is because Garen was not there. Oh, sure. <laughs> Since we now know the roofing costs, a whopping $500, and we don't want to forget the window costs of $350, the grand total is $3,375. This isn't the door we're going to be installing this in, but we're going to use this as a model. The door up above is a slanted door at the top. We used seven two by six tongue and groove and we glued them together to make the door. If I got out, this thing would go whoop. Bing. We used bolts to hold all the tongue and groove boards together. Okay. 
Originally, we had decided that we wanted a round window, two half windows in, as one, but we discovered that the, the width of the windows was just too much to take out of the center of the door. We'll go ahead and slide the windows this way and then turn it like this so that we have less of a width and we have enough room here for the handle. Following the line to cut it out, I'm using that tool to do it. So we pre-drilled the hole there, then are able to stick our blade in and make sure the hole's on the inside of the line too. From there, we're able to cut around the whole thing. So let's go ahead and put it in. We're gonna be using butyl rubber, and this is a typical window sealant. Instead of finding ways to clamp this into the window or screw it into the window like you would typically do, we're gonna actually glue this little puppy in here with this uh, butyl rubber. Do you notice that Bryson's not with us? Mm. Decided to go off and go skiing. Oh. <laughs> and while it's drying, I'm going to devise a quick and easy system here. I'll do this on both sides. Then I can flip the door over and work on the other side. We hope that Bryson and the crew had a great time skiing. The cost of the door is 50 for the wood, 75 for the hardware and door jam, and 25 for the windows, which brings us to a total of $150. <laughs> The door turned out a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. Fits. It like acts as almost like a skylight too with the window and so it like lights the room real nice and stuff. It's really, really cool. Adding the upstairs door to our accumulated cost makes our new grand total $3,525. We prepare to paint the exterior. Before we start painting, Bryson moves the dirt away from the building. And then we start taping everything off. Windows, doors, bottle lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around and seal all the cracks up above with this foam. This marquee paint is supposed to be one of the best paints. It's got UV protection and it's supposed to be one coat over the stucco, which is gonna be interesting to see if it really is. It was a lot of money, a little over $200, which is way more than what we normally pay for paint. We usually get the recycled paints and pay 10 bucks. We chose to do a different method of painting this time around. Typically in the past, we've used rollers and it's taken us several days to, to work on it. We own an airless sprayer. The advantages to having the airless sprayer is of course the biggest one is time. Now let's try the other bit. I hadn't used this thing in years. So we had to get it in, get it cleaned up, take it apart, oil it. We got things all set up, flip the switch, nothing happened. Bryson takes his multimeter out, has everything all hooked up and says it's the switch. So he went ahead, replaced the switch with a little wall socket switch that you have at your house. Just shut it off. Drum roll, please. Oh yeah. Okay. When the boys were young, I was really involved in their problem solving. But Bryson no longer needs my help. He really enjoys working with anything electronic. I just back away and I just let him do it. I forgot how to use the sprayer. So I gave the neighbor a call, he gave me some quick instructions. We got it primed right. Okay, thank you. You think we're ready, Bry? I gotta get the water out of it now. It's a brown. Beautiful. All right, we're going up. It was my job to paint. The spray patterns and working with how to spray, Bryce and I worked together and we got that all figured out. Eliminating a lot of the overspray, conserving our paint. It was challenging to get up in those eaves, but after a while I got used to it. Painting in the little corners and the edges takes a lot of time. With an airless sprayer, got it right away. I just want to show you this light switch. This light switch proves my little homestead was apart. This is our signature move. We always put a light switch on electronics. And anything we can't get to turn on, it gets a light switch. And it's the Garenster's job now. Show off. Garen jumped in there for a short time and helped me out. He always works really fast, so it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> All right, I think I got it. On my board. Pretty slick, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because it's kind of a thinner paint, so it went right through that machine just perfectly. Hour to paint the entire building. So how do you think it went, Dad? Okay. What's that? How do you think? How did you think it oh, went? Oh gosh, this is the only way to do this. Absolutely, it was great. There's probably about two inches on the bottom of the bucket, so it did make it. It painted the whole thing, including the eaves, and it's it's a nice coat. 
The majority of the painting is done, so now it's on to painting the trim, which is us girls' job. We're using this brownish purple color because it's what we have, and it's not going to cost anything. The guys will be working on the trim around the door and the trim around the patio. Yeah. Finishing up the trim, guys, the last of it? The last of the trim. We need to add the $225 paint to our accumulated total. This brings our total for the exterior of the building to $3,750. to begin the soil cement subfloor. Soil cement is easy. It's easier than laying normal cement it's and like cheaper. A, it's kind of like dry pour with a fence post. You know, you just pour your cement in, pour some water in, and shazam, bam, it's done. The yeah. floor. We have a, everything out of here right now. We level out the floor. So we can begin to level this floor. We want to level it about three quarters of an inch down. We're a little bit low on the back side, so we had to bring some dirt in to level it. Diesel has been a big help. Sure. He has? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's a white he dog. He was breaking up the dirt for me. He was digging holes and it was making all the dirt loose so I could scoop it. Good boy. Look how many muscles we're building. Yeah? Yeah. It's better than working out. Were you thinking about working out, lifting weights? No. Why would I? I'm doing this. Wow, Gary. Okay, I dare you to go up there now. See. Walk up the side. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. No, really. You can walk up the side like this. Gary. Hey Bryson, you're the dirt thrower. I need dirt right here. You gotta have enough dirt in the room to get to your level spot. Okay, bye. Let's do our string thing. Okay. Your string was in my way. No, your dirt was in my string way. We measure periodic spots around the floor with a line level to make sure that oh. we're up to speed. Level. I found a guy selling a- Craigslist, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, he was selling um, lawn mowers and little tillers and stuff, and this was just perfect size for this. Yeah, it's a smaller one than last time. And the idea is to put in about a half inch or three quarters of an inch of uh, Portland cement. Then we bring the tiller in, and we till it down about four inches, working the Portland cement into the soil, making soil cement. Yeah, pulling it backwards is Works actually better, better than having it go forward. forward. Or it did not work very well. It was just like rolling on top of the ground, but if you pulled it back, it would dig into the ground nice. We water it down, uh, we tamp it, and then screed it and tamp it and kind of work with it until it's all nice and flat and then it gets watered for three days. Periodically we'll come in and spray some water on it. Bob goes in over the top of it. Adding in $50 for the cement brings our grand total to $3,800. The next step is to complete the walls. Cobb is a material of choice. His grandparents had a septic dug, so they needed a place to put the dirt. And we said, oh yeah, just throw it on our property. Which a few years later, we started building these buildings and doing cob. And we came back and looked at this, and sure enough, if this wasn't clay. So we've got this big clay pile that we've been using for years. We use a mixture of sand and clay. This time though, we did add some of our dirt, which is kind of like if you put it in a cup, you know how you can tell where the clay and the sand separate? We're about half and half on our dirt. So we threw in some of that and made it extra sticky. Topped in between the creases because we had a new system of doing it this round. We were gonna try spraying the cob. Well, we're doing good, guys. We got this room chinked in. It's looking just ducky. Just wash these so I can wear them last night. Hey, bro. Isn't there a rubber ducky song or something? Rubber ducky. It's a it's a Sesame Street Sesame Street song. But you can't sing it because it'll probably be copyright infringement. No, no, it's only the original tracks. Oh, That's what we well, let's hear it then. <laughs> he can't hear me because he has headsets on. What? <laughs> do the headsets make you go faster? I think they do. Yeah. We're done! 
instead of all the time that we put all the mud on the walls, we thought we would try this idea of spraying it on like stucco. But I don't have a stucco sprayer. No. Yeah, we have a sheetrock mud sprayer. We, we did try it. It oh. failed at first. Time. Yeah, very bad. This is an experiment, so oh. testing different ways of doing things. Okay, there we go. go. Ready for the test? Go with a uh, three to one mixture of um, sand and cement. There's a pipe that's in here that goes out to the end, and the problem was it was restricting the mud from going out the end. It was used for thinner mud, but we just cut it back. We're gonna see. Here, let's hey, look, look at where the mud's at. All right, see mud at the tip. So we made a couple modifications to it, mm -hmm. and it worked. Wow, that's fantastic. It saved a ton of time. I like putting fob up. It's really soothing and nice, but I don't think any of us but the sprayer could stay in the room because it was so loud. The texture is really rough. We tried to soften it with a tool and knock it off by hand. Yeah, I, think it, I actually think it came out pretty good. I don't know what I was expecting, but I mean, that's sure a whole lot of work saved. And then we eventually just used the broom to brush it off. We didn't want to go over the entire walls again, flattening it out. So we decided to just go with the rough look. Bryson was happy with it, so that's the main thing. A lot of the cob fell off the wall. <laughs> I think a lot of it made it on the wall, but a lot fell too. So we just had to pick that up at the end of the day's work, and we put it in some, we put it in wheelbarrows, and we'd use it the next day. Probably one of the most important things about us is not that all the corners are all straight, and, and that uh, the walls are all perfectly round or family project. Yeah, it's more of a yeah. family thing or family time together. It's really important to us. A lot of times you just want to jump in there. You have a certain expectation that you want. If the kids are going to join in and be a part of it, you just got to let it go. Mm -hmm. We keep things within safe tolerances. There's just something about the roof falling, you know, and the children <laughs> were not there. That could be bad. <laughs> right, but you would jump in if it was a safety yes. issue. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. The cob is free, so that brings our accumulated total to, well, 3,800. Next, we prepare for painting. We needed to buy brand new paint because we wanted to use the sprayer again to spray the interior walls. So when I was at the store, I found a five gallon bucket of paint on sale. It was a clearance for like $35 and it was interior, it was semi-gloss, it was everything that we needed and I just couldn't resist. There was only one drawback and that is... Um, oh my gosh. It was pink. What? I see lots of paint. Pink? It was pink. It has a pink hue. It was pink. I, I, it, maybe it's more pink. Not, not maybe pink, but salmon. Pink. We needed to convert the pink color and we wanted it to be kind of a light brown. So we looked it up and we found out in order to change the color, we needed both yellow and blue. We ended up adding green and saving the day. We just kept adding that green color and Bryson would mix it until we got a color that it actually turned out to be a really nice brown color. With the paint dilemma solved, Bryson can now get to painting. We do need to add the $35 paint to our total, making the new total $3,835. Oh man, I really like this paint. It's not that pink that I was worried about. So I'm gonna go upstairs. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. There's the whole room. Dad begins the planning. Close in. In one by, please. 
to create a frame underneath the stairs. I'm helping you out, Dad. Hey, <laughs> <Thanks>, Tiny. <laughs> I'm gonna cut something now. What are you making? A thingy. Uh, so you know that no, no profoundness. The closet under the stairs was something to help support the other side of the steps themselves. What was really cool about the cedar is that we found fence boards, inexpensive, what would be 97 cents for each piece. So it was real cheap to be able to put that on. The risers are all built underneath, so they kind of set inset underneath using one by three material. And then on the outside, the wall is actually built on a curve in small sections just underneath the stairs. So it looks like a curve, but really it's a series of straight lines. And then we put the uh, cedar boards on the outside for a nice look to, um, to kind of finish it off. Staining this with some golden pecan. That's what Bryson wants. Yep. So beautiful. And then put a door on the end. Ah, oh, geez, when little kids come over, this is going to be a great place to hide. Okay, these are my boards for the door that's gonna to go to the closet. Three quarter inch by six inch time of groove. One side is surfaced with kind of a rough surface, the other side's smooth. We're gonna have rough surface out since all the wood that's around it is all the same. Put the cross braces on in a similar fashion. We're gonna design it the same way as we designed the front door that we had and the upstairs door. We're gonna install this, uh, just a bedroom door handle. It's black to match our hinges and so on. It is three quarter inch material, so I have to put a block on the other side so that this has something to go into. I think these all black so they match. Just a flat black, just like we did the other bolts. Cool. And then the door is gonna have bolts. Dun, dun, dun. Just going here like this. Remember how we have the other ones done? I bought one for each one of the panels. We'll be drilling a bolt in each one of these. Kind of give it that same look and feel. These are a little short, so we're countersinking them. Yeah, you'll have to close the door a little bit longer. There, see like that? I'm just adjusting. Might be a little adjustment we have to do. So let's look at it though. And I love garage sales. Shell picked up a belt sander. I've been wanting one of these things for years. Paid a couple bucks for it. Okay, we just need to put the striker plate on and the door's done. We're gonna stop her, don't you think? Stop it. of the closet brings our new total to $3,975. While Dad was installing the closet, Bryson is laying the floor on the landing using leftover materials. I used some leftover flooring material. I'm just drawing out the pattern. Let's now go trim it out. I'm trying to get it as tight as against that wall as possible. The flooring locks together with tongue and groove. All right, Dad. That really looks good. I trim it out using one by two. It's an easy install. It's ceiling time. For our ceiling, we like to collect pallets, and that's probably our favorite ceiling, is the mm -hmm. pallet ceilings. It worked out really well for us, and we've used them on, on about three projects now. Mm -hmm. Our resource for pallets are beginning to run a little dry. Dried right up. Mm -hmm. So I had this idea mm -hmm. that I wanted to get, um, you know, like the wood floor, like what you, you get those little planks. And I thought if I could find some on Craigslist used, maybe we could find a chunk of them and be able to use them up on the ceiling. But you just wanted to make sure that it was real wood. That wood. was that was the main thing for you. Mm -hmm. And I saw somebody selling over 300 square feet and they wanted a little over $100 for it. Yeah, cheap. So we discussed it and we thought, well, go look at these things. We couldn't tell from the ad if it was actual wood or not. And mm -hmm. if it was what we wanted, we would offer him $100 for it. We get there, and the guy who was selling it, and I said, is it is it wood? And he said, it's laminate. So I looked over at Gary and I said, um, laminate? And you affirmed that it was laminate. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, laminate, you know, wood. Laminate, <laughs> is it not laminated wood? Well, yeah, plywood is laminated. So I looked at him and said, would you take a hundred bucks for it? And he said, yeah. We had to back the car up, we get in the car. Oh, I was like, what's wrong? It, it, we didn't get wood. But you went along with it anyway. I did, said, I don't have to be a wood snob. 
Yeah, you, you are. He, he, he is a wood snob. <laughs> this way we get the floor and the ceiling. Well, with our new idea of making the floor a ceiling, I guess that's how it's gonna go in. I've never hung uh, flooring on the ceiling, so it's gonna do to be a little, a little different. Not sure how to finish that off, but we'll figure out something. Bryson, take that one we'll right try. there. That might, might work here, I don't know. It's kind of like a, a uniclick uh, where all four sides of the planks lock in. That's beautiful. So you have to have all your seams have to be perfect. Because we can't get it to really hang up there, we have to nail it in. Because we can't walk. Be well, in case you're walking up there, you don't want it to move on you. Yeah, so yeah, you that, nail it down. And put some insulation up there. Yeah, yeah do a little bit of time Simple. insulation, a little bit of time insulation. We're putting in R30 insulation. R30 instead of R35. R31 and a half. Yeah, that's hard to find. Yeah, that, that's hard to find. This is not insulation. It is the devil's cotton candy. The most feared, itchy, yet strangely beautiful in color. I hope I got the angle right. Bryson did a great job cutting the edges, but there's still a gap between the wall and the ceiling. We decided to use spray foam to fill the gap. Because of the rough wall, we were able to do it. We're just gonna try to blend it like, this will, we can fake this to make this look like hog, so we just kind of blend it to fill in those holes. Painting the foam here, trying to blend it in with the uh, wall. And it turned out pretty good. She's nice. washing the ceiling. I'm yeah. washing the floor. You know, you need a mop. Oh yeah, beautiful. Look at that. We started to run out of laminate flooring and we knew we weren't going to be able to make it on that second circle. So we decided to buy another batch because we knew we wouldn't be able to match it exactly. The colors are similar, but the front building is a little bit lighter. This time we made a better deal and ended up getting more and paying less for it. The back circle was flat and then the front circle was angled. We're going to span a distance from this side over to this pole here, all the way. I had to cut angles to each individual piece. It was all segmented out so that each section was flat and then they all kind of just came around. This part over here Bryson's really looking forward to. Right here, we only have a pole here, but no pole out here, but they'll be just fine because they interlock, so they hold each other in as they, as they go down. It was a fan. It had a light on it. Officially an unboxing video of a fan. It's your biggest fan. Take her bottoms and bend those to fit, and they'll be fine. Just don't, don't do too much because this is just spot welded in there. I don't want that to come loose, but just bend end these pieces. Gotcha. To fit. Perfect. Okay, okay, hang on. We got this. Um, I was trying to put a screw in. Mm hmm. Yep, um, it, it was tall and I just kind of got a little frustrated with it. So I, uh, yeah, and, and Garen had to save me. What? <gasps> what was that? What was that, Bryson? Huh? How many, how many huh? screws? Yeah, I mean, He's probably better with a drill than I am. I could beat him any day in 3D printing, so. Go there. Very nicely done. Is that it? Oh no, there's one spot left. Yeah, I know, I'm waiting. That's it, I'm giving up right there. <laughs> Gonna leave that one piece. Yeah. That is so nice of you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is nice of me. Done. We're going to have to extend the fan light uh, pole that drops down from the because ceiling the because the roof is so steep in that section. So fan we... would just hit the roof. Thump, 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 thump. So we're just staying in. These are the pieces that are going to be, I guess we call it trim, huh, for the ceiling. Yeah. Right? They're gonna fit up. Up on the ceiling. They're gonna fit up in between the seams up here on the roof. On each one of these bays. They're gonna cover up the creases up there. Under the landing was just simple flat stuff. And put some cedar siding around the edges of the platform. Looks pretty nice now. So that it will match the closet. Because the closet's cool. 
The two batches of laminate flooring comes to $175. The insulation costs are around $225. With the ceiling fan added at $50, this brings our new grand total to $4,425. The cost of the insulation wouldn't change. It's just the cost of whatever we cover the insulation with. Pallets are free, mm -hmm. um, but they're not totally free. We still have to go pick them up. We still have to tear them down. We paid $100 for the first batch and $75 for the other. So it ended up being $175 for the ceiling. So the real savings, like you said, is in the, the time savings that it had. But it was huge. I mean, that was a lot of work pulling those, uh, those apart. It does take a long time to, to break them down. Mm -hmm. and oh, We still like the pallets. We just thought we would do this just to do something a little different. Yeah. You know us, we like to try something different. Mm -hmm. I think the ceiling turned out really, really well. Right, that looks so cool. You know, I like wood. So, you know, you might expect that I wouldn't like it, but I actually do like what we're seeing there. So it's a nice look. It'll be easy to maintain. Installation was pretty easy. So yeah, overall, good. It's on to the rocket stove. A couple months back, the guys began to plan where they're going to place it. My thought was, is firebox can a bench and then you won't take off into the road. Oh. And then we put a bench here. They decide on the back circle. Probably won't be no more than probably this wide. Our know. benches are usually straight, but we decided to kind of give this one a little bit of a curve. Match the wall a little bit. Contours the wall. What he said. We bought the barrel at a uh, local oil changing business in town, so it's nice. Five bucks. Yeah, it's good. We had a first design where we wanted to use a block, but... The problem with this look is... This look is nice. nice. We but we have to cut all down. of them in half. So he gave up on that. I like those. We found some terracotta that we had acquired somewhere. We need just another inch or two of a cop seat. So it's only going to be about that high. We got the piping at the local hardware store. At the end of our bench here, we want to be able to put a clean out so that we can clean out in different areas. There will be plenty of room to, to get that in. This is dirt. Lots of dirt. We are fortunate to already have some fire brick. This is the base of the firebox. Green brick alongside that too. So you ready for that? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, okay, let's handle. And here's our opening down here. Come around this way here. You might be able to get um, at the focus rise. Oh, there we go. Firebox now that we push in from the front as opposed to from the top. Okay, so the fire is in that little thing, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. We built the firebox a little different this time. Instead of actually running the wood in top, we ran it from the side. And then where is it? Is this the opening that Dad's working yeah, on? Yeah, and the uh, chimney stack kind of comes out this way. Nice and got new boots. So now your feet aren't going to pop out on every video we do with that bright orange. They're going in your keepsake. They're going in your keepsake? Yes. Yeah. We should go to oh, we could go look at it. You want us to go look at it? Yeah. So yeah, so if we go 12 inches up from the top of his barrel, which is here, then that's about where it is on his. Aaron seems to work really well, so we're going to go with the 12 inch one. Which is pretty much simple mathematics is really when you have a six inch pipe, you want to go a 12 inch chimney. It's just two times. The 3 to 1 ratio that we used for the combustion chamber. We sometimes have had a smaller, like a six inch and then maybe an eight inch or 10 inch pipe around it, but our barrel is not quite big enough for that. We didn't really have materials around the property. You come up two inches and flare it. We're measuring out 14 inches so you can flare these back an inch. I don't know what I just suggested, but, but it works. Dad likes it. <laughs> I don't know. So we literally built one. Three thick. Locking them on. Mm -hmm. We tape them together with that uh, great metal tape, which works really well. Enough to at least set a form, and then we use cob inside the chamber itself. That's a combustion chamber that we built. As far the as the insulation. Seat. Yeah, the insulation from the inside of the chamber to the out. We have a minimum of two inches that we have from the outside of the combustion chamber to the inside of the barrel that sets over the top of it. Two inch taller than the chamber, yes. Okay. So it would be two inches at the top and a minimum of two inches around. On the outside edge. Means I have to go get a new one. <laughs> it looks a little grinded down. 
reading ears and a barrel. So, so this goes like this. We put wood in here, and the fire burns here, and then air gets sucked into here, and then it goes through this chamber, and then the barrel is going to sit on top of it. Because you're going to allow the fire to burn up and around, and it's going to come down, and it's going to exit out that way, come down here, come back around the back, and up and out. Lisa was chewing on these. And grind it in here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, here. At this point now we're trying to level our combustion chamber a bit, but also have to make sure that we're within two inches of the top. One way to do that is I'm gonna measure up from here straight across and then see where this fits. It should fit about, yeah, look at that. Nine and a half. That comes up here nine and a half. So we're good getting our, you know, a couple inches right here at the top of that, which is what we want. Kind of needs to set where it needs to set, not much To clean out on the end. 45 degrees. Right here we have some barbed wire that we need to go ahead and cut that loose so I can get a pipe through. There's a hole in the wall. <laughs> I think I have the angles right. Beautiful. We angled up the exhaust a little bit up as the pipe went on. The smoke would always have an exit going up. We're gonna test our fireplace out before we cover it all up, just to make sure everything's built correctly. Like we did on the other rocket stoves, you don't need a lot of clearance between the wall and the stove pipe itself because there's not a lot of heat that's put off by the stove pipe. The combustion chamber provides a really efficient burn, burning a lot of the materials there. A lot of the heat is spent there as the little bit of smoke and a little bit of moisture comes out of the combustion chamber. The bench passively stores the heat from the combustion chamber exhaust. You run it that big for half hour? You just hour. feel the heat. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah, it's really nice. Nice. Chuck more wood in there. Why? Because it's fun. It'll, the best it'll, it'll feel really good when it's 100 degrees out. Are you happy with the spray? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're just kind of tamping it down, getting it into the corners, making sure that we're filling up the entire box. That this is awesome. So, how much higher are you going to go here with this spray? It will go about an inch higher than these bricks. Okay. The family artist is at work putting together her recreation of sculpting and molding. Trained, of course, by her famous Jacques, who helped bring her along and make her the sculptor that she is today. Dad, we're not bringing Jacques back. Bryson's doing a great job over here, too. Kind of rounding it off. Looking good. Oh, that does look good. Like that. Good Jiggle it. Like jello. Like a... Wow, that's beautiful. After the cob is completed, mom runs to get the tile bucket. Kind of a junky tile bin, yeah. but see if we can put some tiles in there. What's Shay got going over here? A little design. I'm just pushing them down. I hope they're going to be all right. Looks good, right? That's a nice look. Make sure they can stay smooth. Just got the flue. The exterior flue coming out and um, making an elbow turn, going up, putting a little cap on the top for rain. Metal tape it onto here. And then I kind of bent this down, trying to help keep wind at the top here. All right, we got her all finished up. It's on there and perfect. We had most of the supplies for the rocket stove, with the exception of the barrel, the ductwork pipe, and the fittings, which we estimate to be around $100. This brings our new grand total to $4,525. There's a closet and a rocket stove right here. Pipe going up and out. It's a very nice seat it is. And boop, glowing coat. With the rocket stove complete, it's time to move on to the cob floor, or it might be referred to as an earthen floor. Before we get started laying the cob floor, we need to place the tiles on the steps, stairs, 
Ben Entry. We would like to make the steps a little stronger because Cobb has a tendency to kind of break down. So we tile the area that gets the harder work. I have concrete underneath and then I'm cementing the tiles in to the steps. We've had these little brown tiles on the property since we bought this property, what, 10, 12 years ago, Gary? Yeah. And we have found a use for them. Okay, we're just laying some tile ideas out for the entry. Put these down with liquid nails. So that'll be fun. This is a 15 sick. 15 sand, six clay? Yeah. We did have to okay. filter the clay. The sand was just perfect. They just keep bringing me loads and I would just smooth it all out, get it all level. You can do the bath, or do you want to eyeball it? Yeah. Also, too, Garen, this is the low side, so the higher you want to make it, the better, the better for the floor. Okay. Garen has just got this talent to be able to level the floor with his eye, and it just looks amazing and it's smooth and it's a beautiful floor. And I'm going to be honest, he is almost as good as I am. Garen has a knack for leveling the floor by eye. How do you do it? Make sure that the room's real light so you can see, you know, what's higher and what's lower. If the room's all dark, you don't get the glare off from the water off the cob, and it it always looks fairly close. You the see shine, it, see the, the shine. level a little better from the shine. Oh, yeah. It looks level when you walk around there and you just kind of tilt your head. Yeah, yeah it looks know. perfect. <laughs> One batch after another. And we've got this thing going, huh? We're punching the clay out so fast and then getting that uh, cob floor installed that the work that I was trying to do is get the steps tiled, at least to a point where they could cob up next to it. So I had to stay ahead of them. So that was, that was quite a challenge. Wow, looks complete. Are you hiding? I'm hiding, yes. Gonna do some time lapse of the floor. Gary took off and got a snack, I see. Peanut. Peanuts, um, I would say that's Protein. a little, keep little us, more keep than us. peanuts. Well, it might have a few M&Ms in there. kind of my own mixture of cob with sand, clay, and then like a couple little of two inch shovelfuls of cement. That was close. This is, this is really good. Garen did a great job. And that wasn't just me. Day three and we're waiting for it to drive. We did put these bricks here to help keep the dogs out. Floor is finally dry after four days. Cardboard just keeps our feet from scuffing the floor up. You know, our feet could tear up the floor pretty easily. I'm going to use boiled and seed oil. We're just going to use a roller here and roll it on. We're going to go ahead and do five coats on this floor here. This is a floor after you can see the linseed has soaked in. It's not shiny. Ready for another coat. We apply five coats of linseed oil over the course of a few days to allow for dry time in between. We used about seven gallons of linseed oil. At $85 a can, we can estimate the total to be $125. This brings our new accumulated expenses to $4,650. Look at this. Oh, this is so cool.
that work? if we want to add Bryson's room to it. Last year we purchased for Garrett's room two solar panels, two batteries, and a full kit to do that inversion to AC. Yeah, and it was kind of our first test of getting solar. In a bigger scale. We can't afford to buy it for like the whole house, but we thought we would just start with the little mm -hmm. the little rooms. Because he's been running a um, little over a year on that now, mm -hmm. and so it was a good test for us to see how it would do. And it actually has done really well with the exception of he cannot run his 3D printer over there. I think the 3D printer would run for like six or eight hours, and that was the problem is it took a big drain. Knowing that we had to increase Garen's room by one more panel, we just added four panels. Three yeah, because Bryson has a 3D printer as mm -hmm. well. Okay, we have our panels and our batteries are tucked under here, deep down. In we the have curtain. four panels and four batteries and then some cable y things that connect them. There's the store, too. Oh, yes. Right there at that store. Yes, that is the solar. He's got a new sign. He didn't have that last time. Yes. Let's head home. Hook them up. Yes, let's do. Gary will increase our current system from two panels to six panels. He installs two poles with supports angled 32 degrees towards the sun. Garen picked an angle somewhere between summer and winter. We purchased brackets that are designed to connect the rails. Are you teasing the pig? The structure is in place. Time to slide in the additional panels. It's a one-to-one -one ratio from panels to batteries. Garen attaches it using specific connectors for the panels. We need a little thicker wire to handle the power coming in from six panels, so I'm going to replace this wire here, put a little bit heavier gauge stuff in. So was it six there. gauge? Yeah, we're putting six in. And what is that? Well, it's probably like ten gauge. You come in and help me dig? Oh boy. Diesel doesn't leave Garen's side and tries to help wherever he can. So that's the six gauge that's come under the building. Electricians, look away, please. Don't see my beautiful handiwork. Okay, so the white one went you up to this, six gauge? and the black white. one, and the black one then okay. is going up there. This thing can take up to six pounds. So Garen, how did you wire these in? Okay, so we have six panels, three and three is what we've kind of separated into groups. And the reason is we get too many ants through. running through the little wire that we have. So we can't have six panels running through the littler wires. We take and we wire two sets of three panels into one box and we wire them into a big six gauge wire under the ground and that will go straight into the control panel. Because all my wires coming out here are black and they're not labeled, I'm just going to check them on a volt multimeter here. You can check, you know, which, which ones are which. So these are coming out of two sets of three panels. You don't want to touch any of these together because these are all hot, you know, because of the sun. It's not like you can turn the sun off. it to kind of help stick it out because the cob, the box is way back here and the, the building came way out here so the cap won't fit on them correctly. So.
I am wiring up the batteries. Our system is 24 volt, so we buy 12 volt batteries in sets of two. Okay, so he has six batteries here, and he wired two of these together with minus to plus with a jumper. Then he took and ran the two plus and minus over to a main jumper. I connect this. I'm gonna check the voltage, make sure that it is 24 volts coming out, because um, otherwise you can get, you know, if you wire them all all together, which I may have done first, you get, you know, like 75 volts out of this thing. You only need 24. So yeah, we're right on. Right on 24. Then he takes the 24 volts and connects it to the main cables, which go up to here. All right, cool. perfect amount of wire. We didn't even cut this, like it was just a perfect roll. So it comes out here, from the building, up to that building, right there and goes in. And Diesel, he's watching, and he's learning, and he is ready to help. Can help me out? He was, he was laying in the ditch a few minutes ago, yep. How can you always be on my way, Kurt? <laughs> Looks so beautiful, Garen. It does. Oh, it's gonna Just have to. turn on. See, you have lights. Shut it off, we don't have power. And we know mine has power. Maybe something on. on you have a wire that's not connected up in here. Watch it. No I juice. see no juice. And that, maybe it's the breaker. So it's the breaker. It's a brand new breaker. Oh, I see what Check it is. Check the bus. Oh. Okay, we should have power now. We're just in the wrong slot. Yeah. Very hilarious. The solar panels and batteries are separate from the building costs, since it's optional. Last year, our budget for the initial system was three grand. This year, we didn't need to purchase the inverter, which was half the cost. We budgeted twenty-five hundred for the four solar panels and four flooded batteries. Part of homesteading is moving off of the grid, and that gives us the independence of our own power. It, it is our goal to be completely off-grid, but um, it's not very practical for us right now. So we're just taking small steps mm -hmm. to get there. Well, a bedroom's not supposed to take a crazy amount of power. <laughs> Except for when you have two sons like ours that like to, you know, just... Have, each have 3D printers who want to print for hours on end. So we got six panels going for just those two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting now, a year from now, to see, hey, you know, could we run those 3D printers? It's time to move him in. But first, we need to buy him a real bed. He hasn't had one for over 10 years. Bryson is a camouflage fan, so it's time to give a camel paint job a try. Here's all the colors we got. We looked it up online and learned how to do it. Our base color, kind of an olive green. So we'll put that base down first. Always paint left in cans. Or not, that one. Not that one either. video we learned from used real leaves, but since we don't have any real oak trees around here, Garen has an idea. Oh, and then you're going to do that one? Ooh. Garen printed them out and then we taped them on some light cardboard. It's yeah. blotchy in some places, but it's, I guess it's supposed to be a little blotchy. Okay, let's try another color now over the top. How should we do it on this side? Is this going to help paint a little better? Oh, yeah. Now it's looking totally like camel. Poor thumb. <laughs> I should have a little more. <laughs> that's it right there. This is really awesome, Karen. That's, that's awesome. That's phenomenal. The shadow in the fourth black. Yeah, it does. Thank you.
two of you guys to wax that? Yeah, yeah. Can I no. yeah. Oh, it's beautiful though, I have to say. I made some curtains for out of camel. Not really a sewer, but can we put some a blanket that we weren't using to be the liner so he'll have some extra protection from the cold. It felt really awesome to be moving into my room. It was awesome. just, this is awesome. And at first you just don't believe it. You're just like, no way. I, I had to pinch myself a few times to figure it out. We were actually moving stuff in. Some friends came over to help, so it was all fun there. The desk that I had was just way too big. It had a nice, it was nice, but it was just wouldn't fit in the room very well. So we ended up taking it apart and kind of fitting it against the wall so we could put the whole desk in there. Yeah, we even had to build some legs and stuff, and as we were taking it apart, all of a sudden the whole thing just collapsed into this flat pile, and we're like, oh. So we took some screws and screwed it back together and built legs for it and got it in there. It's a mess right now. All right, Bryson, what are you doing? It's a mess. Don't look. And it is a mess, but you know what? I think I know where half the stuff goes, if not. Oh. Take a potato, go on. They're pretty sweet. <laughs> no, I forgot about that chest. You know, I was thinking I'm gonna put it here, but I think I'm gonna put it over there. Thanks, Each of us have a light box in our rooms. We do. <laughs> for filming box, reasons. <laughs> that light box would probably be yeah, used for filming. Actually, I have to put a light box back there. Right? What do you, where's your 3D printer? It's, it's right there. It, it's kind of oh, cool, right? oh, I, I see. Know, it's just so cool. Didn't realize I had so much stuff. Holy cow. So much stuff. Okay, I keep boxes of things you would never use anymore. Garbage electronics, things that have broken, and I just throw them in boxes and I keep them. Because I go, you know what? Oh, this might have a couple of electronics in here I could use to fix something else. So I keep it. I keep it. And someday, it could save your iPhone. I was sleeping up in this loft before I moved in. I, yeah, I was happy to move out of there. <laughs> this is my old loft up here. Oh boy, it's dark up here. And the loft actually was a lot of fun up there. It was kind of nice and cozy. The bedding I used to sleep on. <laughs> bye bye. Don't need you anymore. It's really nice to finally actually have walls to decorate. It took two days to move everything in. Possibly even three, if you count all the boxes. Is it really? And then you wake up and you're just like, oh my gosh, I moved into my room. It's unbelievable. But yeah, that was awesome. Yay! And now, Bryson's ready to give us a tour. All right, so let's go take a look in my new room. But first, before we get to the inside, we have to go around the outside. So nothing to see here but paint. So you get around to this side, which is the more funner side which is actually the dictionary word now, so we can actually use funner now. We got these glasses in here. I don't know. <laughs> this thing, window, cameraman, keep up. <laughs> we got so much to see in so little time. Our newest edition pot with what is going to be a live grape. So let's go inside. Ta -da! Got a nice basketball hoop. Closet. The dog likes to be in here too. Get out. We got a nice computer area, 3D printer, stuff like that. And then in here, we got our fire rocket stove going on over here. <laughs> Open door, and outside we go. Around, circle, and back inside. Nice view of our, and that's our room. Our friends came over to celebrate. I got to climb up on the wall and, and move some dirt and shovel it in a, shovel it in a bag. And she was up on the wall and had a blast. Yeah. She did all the work, we just handed her cans full of dirt. Uh, yeah, that's right, she stayed up there and we passed the coffee cans of dirt and she didn't fall. Yeah. Good deal. It came out fantastic. Yeah. 
you. All right. Well, thank you. Honestly, expect you to ask us to help more. More. Yeah. yeah we were like, why well, you know, we have two more large projects, and <laughs> that may happen. <laughs> we're, we're very different experience. And we came out here right after it had rained, and the, the wall was partially up and had to be rebuilt. Part of the adventure. Right? It was part of the adventure. Fill up the bags. And, yeah, it was kind of a very interesting yeah. process. So fun. It's neat to see how it turned out here. You did a really wonderful job. With the, uh, Were you injured in the process of making this? No, I think my lawyer says I'm supposed to say yes. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and now, the grand total cost of the building, $4,650. Really, really awesome. It, it's just, it's phenomenal. I wasn't expecting it to be so big. <laughs> but I think my favorite part is the stairs up. Yeah, that, Those yeah are definitely that's, my that's definitely a favorite. And yeah. I love the use of the wood, it was really clever. Yeah, I like that. I like that, the door. Shay's still got a little longer in her life, but she Not loves it. I you know, adore it. It's really funny to watch people like walk up into your loft though because they're like, oh, this is nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please subscribe. For more information, you can click the website link below. If you like what you see, please share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. Don't post that. <laughs>